Greetings, I'm Professor K. And in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about doing some pen testing with Netcat. Netcat comes with a lot of great features, and we're going to take a look at some of the more useful features that are available with this utility. But the most common use for Netcat is setting up reverse and bind shells, piping and redirecting network traffic, port listening, debugging programs, and scripts and banner grabbing. For this lab, I'll be using one installation of VirtualBox, the latest version, with the extension pack. One virtual install of Kali Linux, updated and upgraded. And one virtual install of Metasploitable 2, and that's going to be our target. All VirtualBox adapters should be set to NAT network, and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go up here to Devices, and let's go to Network, Network Settings. And you'll see that my network adapter up inside of VirtualBox for both of these virtual machines is set to NAT network. And so the next thing we need to do is get the IP address off of our target. So to do this, I'm going to have to log on to Metasploitable 2. Now, if you don't know what the username and password is, it's written for you on the screen, and it's MSF admin, all lowercase. So at the prompt, I've typed in MSF admin. I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now it wants the password. Hit enter. Now we have a prompt. And now that we do have a prompt, we can type in ifconfig. And you'll notice that the IP address for my Ethernet 0 on this machine is 10.0.2.11. This is my IP address. Yours may differ. Let's go ahead and minimize our target. And we're back to our Kali prompt. So one of the easiest things we can do for reconning a target is grab the banner off of that machine depending on what services that we're looking at grabbing the banner from. In this case, I want to use Netcat to grab the banner for any FTP service that may be running on the target. So let's say I've done a scan and it comes up and it tells me that there is an FTP server on that machine. I can now use Netcat to pull the banner. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in NC for Netcat, space the IP address of the target, space followed by the port number that the service is using. In this case, we know that FTP uses port 21. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and lets us know that that target, our Metasploitable 2, is running an instance of a very secure FTPD version 2.3.4. Now, why is that important? Well, now I can look up an exploit if there's one available for FS FTPD version 2.3.4. So not only do we have a banner, but we also have something called a raw connection. So the raw connection is nothing more than a type of TCP protocol that provides an insecure communication. So when using this connection protocol with a provisioning system, anyone with network access to a server can connect to the provisioning system and issue commands. And so with this raw connection that we have established, we can attempt to log on anonymously to the FTP server. So at the prompt, which you do not see, but it's there, in capital letters, I type in user. Very important because this is case sensitive. Give it a space, and now I'm going to type in the name of the account I will attempt to log on with. And it is anonymous. I will hit enter. And now it wants the password. So I'm going to type in PASS, all caps, like so. And again, the password is also anonymous. I'll hit enter. And it tells you that the login was successful. So now I can type in PWD to see where I'm logged on at on the FTP server. So I'll just type in PWD, hit enter. And it comes back letting you know that you're logged on at the root. Now I can type in help. And we can see all the commands that are permitted with this user that I'm currently logged on as over on that FTP server on our target. And so to get out of here, I'm just going to type in quit, hit enter, and we're back to our root. I'll go ahead and type in clear. And now we're going to take a look at grabbing the banner for the web service. And so we can also grab the HTTP banner of the web service that is running on our remote target just by changing the port number from port 21 to port 80. So I've typed in the same command. 
gotten rid of port 21 now I've typed in port 80 I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and now to pull up the banner I'm gonna type in in capital letters head space forward slash space HTTP forward slash 1.0 hit enter and hit enter one more time and now we pull up that banner for that web server running on our remote target now to retrieve the top level page on the web server we need to reestablish that raw connection that we previously had when we pulled up the banner and so again I've typed in NC space the IP address of my target space followed by the port number that the web server is going to be using which is port 80 I'll hit enter and at the prompt I have to type in get space give it a forward slash give it a space HTTP forward slash 1.0 and I'll hit enter I'll hit enter one more time and now you'll see that we have that first page of the web server and so a very popular usage of netcat is for the creation of reverse shells and bind shells so what's the difference a reverse shell is a shell initiated from the target host back to the attack box which is in the listening state ready to pick up the shell a bind shell is set up on the target host and binds to the Pacific port to listen for an incoming connection from the attack box. A malicious software bind shell is often referred to as a backdoor. So in this example of a reverse shell we're just going to assume that we have command execution capability on the target. Now we know that Netcat is installed and it is running on Metasploitable 2 but if this was a Windows machine or some other version of Linux well how you got that Netcat installed and up and running would be completely up to you. So the first thing we have to do is establish a listener on our Kali machine. So at the prompt I type in NC space dash LVP space the port number that I want to use for the listener. So Kali will be listening on port 4444 for any income connections from any other version of Netcat that is currently running on the network. So at the prompt, I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter, and our listener is now established. And so to establish that reverse shell back on over to our attack machine, Kali Linux, which is listening on port 4444, on our target machine at the prompt, I type in NC space, the IP address of my attack machine, which is 10.0.2.15. Your IP address for your attack machine may differ, and you can find that by going back on over to your Kali machine, opening up a terminal, and typing in ifconfig. I'm going to give that a space, a dash E, which stands for execute, give it a space, and I want it to establish a shell using the forward slash bin forward slash sh directory. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter but it would help if I told the target what port to use so let's try that again so right after the IP address I'm going to type in 4444 give it a space and now I'm going to press enter and let's see what happens and now you'll see that we have a connection a reverse shell connection between my target and our attack machine Kali let's go ahead and minimize our target machine and back on over here you don't see a prompt but it is there now this is a TTY connection and TTY stands for telephone connection and this is a very old very limited connection we can run a few commands and we'll start off with the PWD to see what working directory we currently have and currently I'm inside of the home forward slash MS admin directory okay now we can type in ls to see what's available inside of this directory and we have something called a vulnerable that is our only folder so what we want to do next is upgrade this dump shell this tdy shell that we currently have to a more interactive prompt and we're going to do that by using a piece of python code so at my prompt I've typed in Python space dash small letter C give it a space give it a single quote 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import a module called PTY. Semicolon, give it a space. And up inside of that PTY module, I'm going to launch something called Spawn. And I'm going to direct the Spawn to look at the forward slash bin forward slash bash directory to find what it needs to be able to upgrade this TTY shell to a more interactive prompt. So I've got all that typed in there. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll notice that it comes back right away and it gives us the same prompt that we currently have over there on our target. So the rule of thumb is whatever user you are logged on as over on the target machine, those are the same permissions and same access levels you will have over on the attack machine when you establish this upgraded prompt. So to see exactly what permissions and what groups I belong to over on the target as MSF admin, I can type in the ID command at the prompt and it comes back and it lets me know this is what I have available. So whatever commands that this individual has access to on the target machine, those are the same commands that I now will have access to using this upscaled, updated prompt. So can you perform these functions with a Windows machine? Yes, you can. But normally, you're not going to find Netcat installed or even available on a Windows machine. You're going to have a much higher chance of finding Netcat installed and available to you on a Linux machine. So can you install Netcat on a Windows machine? Yes, you can. But again, like I said, you're going to have to get it so that it runs at startup. So there's a lot of configuration. There's actually 10 steps that you have to go through to first download Netcat, and it's not easy to find. There's only one directory that I know of where it's currently available, and it's actually been compiled for a Windows machine, and it's very old. And then you're going to have to go through a number of steps to load the Netcat and modify the registry and do some other things for it to run at startup. So would you normally find that when you get access to a Windows machine? No, you're not going to find that happening. So you're much better off just thinking Linux when it comes to using Netcat. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about doing some pen testing with Netcat. You got questions, you got concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.